Among the social network, business report, and even the academic world, we can always see controversies around the battery swap technologies and business model. In May 2021, IEEE Spectrum, the flagship magazine from the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, published an article strongly criticizing the battery swapping technology, calling this an especially bad idea, a technical and market dead end that separate green investors from their money. What's more, Jeremy McCallick, the professor from Carnegie Mellon University, where I had my master's degree, described battery swapping technology as a relic from the begun EV age. I'm not an academic person, but I can easily perceive the strengths of their disagreement. On the other hand, Better Place, the pioneer for battery swapping, had bankrupted in 2013. Although Tesla also announced their battery swapping version Model S in 2013, the whole battery swapping idea got abandoned after two years. What's more confusing to me is that NIO, the current biggest player for battery swapping, mentioned in Q1 earning call about their plan to release 800 volt fast charging in 2024, which can charge the battery at up to 500 kilowatts. Does this mean the current leader is also abandoning their battery swap technology? To unveil the facts and reasoning under all these controversies, we are going to explore these aspects of battery swap in three episodes. The technology, the business model, and a deep dive into NEO's battery swapping strategy. And in order to give you an unbiased understanding about the story, I'll have direct reference to all articles and papers I used, so you can find them in the end of this video. Welcome to my channel. This is Quinn, who loves doing research. Today, we are going to talk about the mechanism, advantages, disadvantages of battery swapping. First, let's take a brief look into this technology. Battery swapping is actually not a new tech. It started service in as early as 1910, and it has powered EVs to drive for more than 6 million miles at a time. The battery swapping technology is focusing on quickly splitting the battery pack from electric vehicles. So this is actually a bit similar to how we replace battery cells in our old mobile phones. So here is a diagram for how it works. As you can see here, there is an interface for supplying power as well as an interface for circulating the coolant between the battery pack and the vehicle body. If you are interested in more details about the battery swap process, this is the Chinese national standard definition for the safety requirement of battery swap. You can find all details in the doc. There are three major locations where the battery pack will be taken out of the vehicle body. The chassis, which is at the bottom, the side and front top. The two major players in China, NIO and Auto New Energy, are both using the chassis type of the battery swapping. Next, let's take a closer look into the advantages of battery swapping. The biggest advantage comes from the high efficiency of refueling the vehicle range. I'm using refueling here instead of recharging just to generalize both gas refueling, EV recharging, and battery swap. The table below summarizes the comparison of their major properties. It includes a typical gas station, Tesla V3 supercharger, as well as NEO and Auto New Energy battery swapping stations. As you can see here, a standard gas station can serve up to 120 vehicles per hour. As for Tesla supercharger, it can take around 32 minutes to charge a Model 3 from 0 to 80%, and we can install around 50 superchargers in the area same size as gas station service area. While superchargers only charge battery to 80%, because the highest power for supercharger only lasts until 80% state of charge, to ensure the safety and battery life, the rest of the charging will operate at a much lower speed. So if you are interested in how fast charging works, you can take a look at my video about EV fast charging, although it's in Chinese. Please leave a comment if you need the English version. Let's take a look at the second generation NEO battery swapping station. It takes around 5 to 6 minutes to serve one vehicle, and each station takes up around 60 square meters of space. Thus, similarly, we we'll get a service capability of around 144 vehicles per hour. As for auto new energy battery swap station, which is the fourth generation, each service can take around one minute, and each station take around 150 square meters 
Thus, the service capability is around 300 vehicles per hour, twice the capability for a gas station. Thus, now we know that, in terms of range refilling efficiency, the battery swapping is greater or equal to the gas refilling, and is much faster than the typical fast charging station, and there are multiple implications. For individual customers, it means a shorter refilling time and a better user experience. As for enterprise and urban planning, you will require less space for facilities to serve the same amount of EVs. While some people might wonder, what if we take into account the latest 480kW fast charging from x -Pound? Below is the result. According to the official report, it only takes 12 minutes to recharge a battery from 10 to 80%, while another embarrassing incomplete battery charging state. But the speed is quite fast. With the same size as gas station, the servicing capability is around 250 vehicles per hour. So the second advantage of battery swapping is about the flexibility on battery capacity and then the ease of battery upgrade. Since we can swap the battery on vehicle, it's possible for the users to choose battery capacity that's most suitable for their need. And the battery manufacturer can also upgrade their battery pack with the latest safety and energy density improvements. According to the Federal Highway Administration, around 83% of daily vehicle usage is less than 60 miles, and 95% of usage is less than 120 miles. Thus, most of us doesn't really need a battery with more than 200 miles of range. You only need it when you travel for a long distance. And this is exactly what battery swap allows you to do. You can purchase a vehicle with a small battery and only rent a big battery when you travel. You can see such options on NEO's offering. They provide battery pack with both 70 kilowatt hours and 100 kilowatt hours. And this is even more typical for CATL's latest battery swapping service, EVOGO. They can install up to three battery packs on a vehicle, each with around 200 kilomiles of range. On the other hand, the battery pack structure, capacity, and safety has been constantly improving. NEO released their 70 kilowatt hour battery pack in 2018, and then 84 kilowatt hours in 2019, 100 kilowatt hours in 2020. In the incoming fourth quarter of 2022, NEO will start to ship their 150 kilowatt hours battery pack. Additionally, we also see various improvements in terms of thermal runway protection, battery management system, not just in NEO but in the whole industry. Thus, the battery swap users can enjoy these improvements earlier than others. The other two advantages I'm going to mention might not be as sensible to users, but it doesn't mean they're not important. The first one is about battery life improvements as a result of centralized management of batteries in battery swapping station. As compared to the EV fast charging, where people charge their EVs in different locations, the battery swapping station can manage batteries together with a better temperature and charging speed. And you might be surprised by how much improvement it can get. According to the research from Professor Wang in Pennsylvania State University, you can get two conclusions from the graph below. First, among all different charging speeds, 30 centigrade is proven to be the best temperature for longest battery life. Second, under the same temperature, the higher the charging speed, the lower the battery life. On the 30 centigrade, if the charging speed is increased from 1.5C to 2.5C, the effective battery life will decrease from 1000 time to 500 time. Thus, if a battery swapping station can have a good control over temperature and charging speed, the battery life can at least double. And we can see that both Auto New Energy and NEO are listing the temperature control as an advantage of their battery swapping stations. One point worth noting is that EV users might not benefit directly from the increased battery life. The reason is that in most EVs, the battery pack is evaluated together with the vehicle body. If the vehicle body can only last for 10 years, the vehicle will have to be recycled even if the battery can last for 20 years. But this advantage is more obvious in EV with battery swap. Since the battery packs are managed separately from the vehicle body, the improved battery life can benefit all other vehicle users. In summary, the improved battery life is more benefiting the enterprise and whole society than the individual users. The other insensible advantage of battery swap comes from the ability to
to balance the peak and valley of power grid demand. As I explained in the fast charging episode, the growing amount of renewable energy in the power grid is causing the supply demand curve to be more imbalanced. Thus, the power grid is in great need of energy storage to store energy during low usage hour and supply energy during high usage hour. As a reference, fast charging without energy storage can actually contribute to this imbalance effect. According to the research from China National Grid in 2019, most EV users charge their EVs right after coming home, and the charging time is between 6 p.m. to 11 a.m. Such pattern has 85% similarity to the existing load on the power grid. In contrast, the battery swapping station can help to stabilize the power grid usage. According to the research from North China Electric Power University, a battery swapping station with optimized algorithm can effectively reduce the peak usage of the power grid and reduce the peak value difference in the load. Additionally, according to this article from Energy Policy Magazine in 2021, comparing to other approaches like battery charging, catenaries, and hydrogen, the battery swapping approach is causing the least amount of power grid imbalance in Portugal. To help you better understand such a capability, let's visualize the energy storage capability of all the options. A typical fast charging station with energy storage can store up to 250 to 1000 kW of energy. The new battery swapping station can hold up to 13 batteries, thus storing 900 to 1300 kWh of energy, which is of similar level as the fast charging station. Additionally, the auto new energy battery swapping station can hold up to 60 batteries, which represent 3000 to 3.6000 kWh of energy, far more than the fast charging station. So the algorithm for scheduling such energy storage can be quite complicated, but you can roughly understand it like this. So freely charging EVs by users can cause the biggest pressure to the power grid because the usage of charging aligns with daily power usage of communities. If we can add energy storage capability to the charging or battery swapping stations, then we can shift the usage from one period to another. The bigger the energy storage, the stronger such capability. Although the fast charging station can install additional storage to store the energies, they come with additional cost. Whereas for battery swapping stations, they already have a stock of batteries as energy storage. With so many information about advantages, let's have a quick summary about them. So three advantages are sensible to EV users. The high refueling efficiency, the flexibility of battery capacity, and the upgrade capability of battery packs. And these advantages are less sensible to users, but more beneficial to enterprise and society. The battery life improvement, safety improvement, as well as capability to stabilize the power grid. So next, let's talk about the disadvantages of battery swapping technology. The first drawback comes from the compromise in structure design of vehicle and battery packs. If you have closely followed the latest news in EVs, you might have noticed new technologies such as structural battery or cell-to-body technologies. These innovations aim to closely integrate the battery pack with vehicle structure to improve the structure strength and reduce cost. Here we have the latest teardown videos from Sandy Moreau about Tesla Model Y. You can see that the whole battery pack was taken out of the vehicle body along with passenger seats. Quite impressive. While this is not possible for battery swapping vehicles, where battery packs can be easily taken out of the vehicle. Thus, it requires additional structure for the battery swapping vehicles to achieve the same structural strength as others. As this additional structure comes with weight and space. So let's try to quantify such compromises. The table below summarizes the weight, range, and energy consumption for typical EV models, including NEO ET5, Tesla Model 3, BYD Seal, Xpeng P7, I'm also including NEO ET7 here, which is of a higher end model than ET5, just to get a full picture of the comparison. As you can see, although these models are similar in positioning, the weight for ET5 is higher than Tesla Model 3 and x P7. What is even more noticeable is the energy consumption per 100 kilometers. ET5 and ET7 all exceed 13.6, while all non-battery swapping models are below 12.6. 
Although I cannot attribute all these comps to better swapping design, it's still informative to see such horizontal comparison between models. So please let me know what you think. What's more, a bigger drawback of battery swapping is coming from the missing of a common standard. Such disadvantage is quite obvious if we compare it with the status of fast charging standard. Let's take a look at fast charging standard. Although there are four major DC fast charging standard globally, the vast majority of EVs in China has been equipped with a charging port from the national standard. Even if the vehicle is imported from EU or US, you can still find adapters in the ports. Thus, we can almost consider the whole fast charging market as one common standard. To be more specific, the most commonly used standard in China, GBT 20234 2015, was published in 2015 and got adopted widely. Such standardization of fast charging protocol is laying the foundation for cooperations between companies. NIO and XPAN started to share their fast charging stations since 2019, and Tesla is also opening their superchargers to non-Tesla EVs in Europe this year. Such cooperations is improving the user experience and also improve the profit for charging stations, while the standard for battery swap is far lagging behind. The NIO battery swapping station is only compatible with six vehicle models from NIO. Although the station for Auto New Energy is compatible with more than 30 models, their sales combined account for less than 4% of EV sales in China 2021. Let's take a closer look at the latest progress for battery swapping standards. The Chinese Energy Department published five industry standards in 2020 to provide requirements for battery swapping station and batteries. One year later, the group standard for constructing shared battery swap stations was published in December 2021. This standard lists the plan for standardization and requirement for devices and communication protocol, and thus it's a big improvement for the industry. While a group standard is only voluntary for manufacturers, it's still far from becoming a national standard. While what's hurting the standardization even more is the progress of manufacturers. With the development of structured battery and cell to body, the battery pack is designed to be a structural component of the vehicle. Even the seats are directly welded on the battery packs. At the same time, all this technology for integration is the core advantages for individual manufacturers in terms of cost saving and efficiency improvements. Thus, it's basically impossible for these companies to abandon their core advantages and incorporate battery swapping. Noted that we're only talking about the technical disadvantages of lacking standard, and you will see even more obvious disadvantages in my next episode about business aspect of battery swap. After talking about pros and cons, I'll share several of my opinions. First, I want to talk about the relationship between fast charging and battery swap. Many people might put them in the opposite side, but after talking about their pros and cons here, you will find that they have their unique position in terms of refilling efficiency, space, and energy storage capability. On the other hand, fast charging can appear on the same car that can do battery swap. Taking this into account, I personally prefer to see both fast charging and battery swap as different options for user, manufacturer, and government in terms of EV adoption. And the whole EV industry is still quite immature. The EV sales and ownership is still quite low. Thus, I would say that there's still a long way before we can consider any of them as winner. The other understanding I got is that, although battery swapping vehicles come with disadvantages, these drawbacks are not as sensible to users, especially to high-end vehicles. 10% of energy inefficiency and slight cost increase on the vehicles don't really affect customers' purchasing decision. And if you compare any of these EVs with a gas car, the advantage is almost a no-brainer. Thus, instead of focusing on disadvantages on efficiency and structure, I will pay more attention to the standardization of battery swapping technologies, as well as the business side development. These aspects will really decide the future growth of the technology. And I will give a deep dive about business side of battery swapping technology in my next episode. Stay tuned. This is the end of technical analysis of battery swapping technology. You might have noticed 
the amount of effort I've put into this research. So if you like such research work, please push the like button, leave your comments, and consider subscribe. This is my first episode in full English version, so your feedback is very much appreciated. Thank you for your patience. See you next time.